Salvador, when I retired at 57, I lost all my social connections and I lost them because I was still working. So I thought I would take some time today to unpack that because I'm sure that many of us worry about what's going to happen to our friends or what are going to happen to the social connections that we have when we retire. And, and do I continue to work just so I can keep the social connections? So the easy answer to that question is no, don't keep working so you can keep the social connections. But first, I'd like to unpack the different types of connections that you have when you're working. So let's get into it. When you're working, you have a lot of work connections. And when I look at work connections, I break them really into two categories. I've always asked myself when I met people at work, am I just interacting with this person or talking to this person or going to lunch with this person or am I friendly with this person just because I work with them? And that's for about 90% of the people that you interact with at work. Uh, but there's also that other small group of people that you just happen to meet at work. And you have a bunch of interests outside of work. You have things in common. You really like spending time together. And whenever you have an opportunity to, uh, to spend time together, you do it. And that's a small percentage of the people that you work with. But it's an important group. The, the challenge I think we have sometimes, I think, at least in my own perspective, is I've had the tendency to overestimate some of the relationships that I had with people at work. Uh, in roles like mine, a lot of times people came to me because they wanted something, and there were people that befriended me because they thought I can help them push their agenda. And I'm okay with helping people get to where they want to be, even if they're not friends, but a lot of times what would happen is I'd find myself crossing into the friend zone, if you will, with them because I felt like they were genuinely wanting to be friendly with me just to find out that once that goal was met or once I left the organization, that they didn't have any interest of continuing the friendship because I could at no point do anything for them. The other type of friends that I had hobby buddies. I had a group of guys that I would golf with, and so I would golf with them at the same time every week. And out, there was a point in time where I realized that I just wasn't having fun golfing with this group of guys every week. They weren't a gr bad group of guys. We were just different individuals. But the problem that I had was my schedule was so locked in. My schedule was so hectic that the only time that I had any opportunity to go play golf was at this time. And so I started to feel obligated to spend time with these individuals playing golf. I had to do a honest assessment with myself when I retired because once I started to take my time, as they say in politics, as I got to the point where I was gonna reclaim my time, I, I had to do an assessment because I knew that I didn't wanna spend my time with people that weren't bringing me joy because at the end of the day, when you're retired and life in general, it's about being around people that bring you joy. And I had to ask myself the question about not just this group of individuals, but a whole host of individuals. I tend to look at friendships almost like family insofar as I'm not saying that you have to be able to do everything with everybody. But if somebody comes into question as to whether or not you want to spend your time with them, you want to understand and you need to get to the root of, do you want to spend time with this person? Or do you want to spend time doing the thing that you're doing with this person? There's no right or wrong answer, but if you're just spending time with the person because they fit into a time slot or because they do a specific thing that nobody else does, then I think you're probably setting yourself up for disappointment because what will happen is at some point, you may want to do something different or they may want to do something different. And what when you get into a situation where you're doing something that's outside of what it is that you normally do, then you start to see an even broader disconnect between the two of you because you start to realize how different you really are. And then the last group of individuals that I had and that I interacted with were just people that were good friends. And these were individuals that I didn't really have to give a second thought about because these individuals were people that were friends of mine, independent of any type of work, any type of position. And there was nothing that I can do at work 
that they would see as an immediate benefit for them. Now, in the different roles I had, I might have been able to refer somebody to a job or something like that. But when you spend the amount of time with your friends that I do, you can only refer people to so many jobs and you can only help them out on the job front so many times. And that's not going to be in every interaction that you have. Um, And it's funny because when you look at good friends, even when things aren't going well, at work or when things aren't going well in other parts of your life, those are the people that you're talking to about it. Those are the people that are helping you through the storm. And so you have to look at your good friends and really take them out of the equation. But I do think there's an opportunity to evaluate what type of friends that you have or what types of people that you're interacting with. And so when you you look at the three categories of people that you interact with or that you associate with when you're working, work associates, you have your hobby buddies, then you have your good friends, then you have to prepare yourself for your inevitable retirement. And what I mean by prepare yourself is understand that some of these groups of people are going to pull off. And so instead of waiting until you get to the point that you're retired and disappointed because people are starting to fall off. And folks, it doesn't happen quickly. It just happens over time. A couple of things that I'm going to recommend that you do to to prepare yourself is number one, do a gut check. Sometimes you have these relationships and you have these interactions when you're working. And because you don't have the capacity to really think about the relationships that you have, You may feel a certain way, but you never take an opportunity to explore how you feel. So do a gut check. Ask yourself the question, is that individual somebody that I want to spend time with? Is this an individual that now that I have all of my time to myself, I just want to be around them or I want to be around this person, that person, the other person? If the answer is no, then you have a pretty good idea. The second thing I think you should do is... Ask yourself the question, does your relationship with this individual or these individuals rely on you delivering something to them or them delivering something to you? A lot of times when you when you look at a lot of relationships, these relationships are predicated on the giving of something, the helping somebody get ahead, the giving somebody status the potential that you're going to buy something from them or the idea that by having this friendship, you are now connect, connected and networked and you're delivering that to them or them to you. And folks, if that's the basis of your relationship, then they're probably not going to be somebody that's going to fill your cup as you're going down the path of retirement. But again, you have to be honest with yourself because if you're not honest with yourself, You can always convince yourself, oh, this person really likes me. And the higher up you go in organizations, the more people whose job it is to prove to you that they like you and that you have a great relationship. Because the higher you go in organizations, the higher decision-making authority that you have and the more ability you have to help that person be successful by buying their good or services or referring their good and services to other people. So it really takes you being honest with yourself and trying to discern, is this a pro quo, a this for that, or do we really have a, have a good relationship? And the last one that I have is don't trust loyalty or time. A lot of times people get into the habit of thinking somebody's a good friend because they've known them for a long time. And that's just not the case. I liken that to a performance evaluation. You could work at a company 20 years and be a horrible employee. Just because you've been an employee of an organization for 20 years doesn't mean that you're a good employee. It just means that you worked there for 20 years and never got fired. Well, sometimes because you don't have the capacity, there's people that just hang around. When I was younger, I just had people that would hang around just because they wanted to hang around because I might be doing cool stuff or people might have been connected to me in one way or another or I had jobs where I can help people. 
So there were just people, almost like MC Hammer's posse. I had MC Hammer's posse around me in some cases, just because people thought at some point, I'm a good person to have around, I could do something for them. And so some of these relationships and some of these connections I had for 10, 15 years. And just because they were there, I sat back and I took a look and I got into the habit of doing an evaluation on the people around me. I would liken it to a performance evaluation. What's the basis of my friendship? I, I, I've always believed that when people get too comfortable sometimes, they have a tendency to violate boundaries. They have a tendency to feel more comfortable with disrespect. They gain more comfort and showing them their true self uh, where they may have put their best foot forward over a period of time. And I just don't get comfortable with people getting comfortable. I do a performance evaluation on all my friends and I, not a formal performance evaluation, but I keep an eye on what's been going on with this person over the course of the year. Has our relationship been a two way street? Have they shown that they value my friendship with them as much as they value, I value their friendship with me? Or do they value their friendship with me as much as I value my friendship with them? Just asking myself some of those key friendship questions. And, and what I found is the answer is more times than not, probably about 25% of the people that I had around, they weren't really connections that I was going to rely on. If something were to happen to me, I would never hear from these individuals again. And so I'm not going to say I just cut everybody out, although there are a bunch of people that I have cut out of my life over the course of the years. Um, but what I started to do is I started to put people into three categories. I said I had people that I were friends for a reason. If it was a quid pro quo, if it was something that I could do something for you or you do something for me, or we could be mutually beneficial and there was a reason for it, then I knew it. That's what it was. We just have a friendship. And it's not even really a friendship, an acquaintanceship, because of something we can do for each other. And as long as I know that's the case, then I know that there's going to be things they're not invited to. There's going to be people they're not uh, introduced to, or there's certain things that I'm not going to do with that individual. Uh, the second type of, of person was the, was the person that's for the season. They're going through something. And they need different types of people around them. So if let's say you're having family problems, so you might need a supportive person around, or let's say you have a specific set of uh, real transactional problems. So you might need somebody that's really organized and direct, or you might be going through whatever the problems are. And you have a person that you need people around you that are going to help provide that support for that period of time. And so those are the people that are around for that season. And that season can be a month, it could be a year, it could be five years, it could be 10 years. I've had friends of mine or acquaintances of mine that I know I was there for the season because they were going through a tough time and I'm somebody that can help corral thought processes and, and organize logically steps going forward and help people feel comfortable and feel safe with their thinking and really help them, empower them to feel better about the, the path that they're taking on certain things. And then after that's done, I'm out. It's anybody that's been divorced knows that the first thing that happens when you get divorced is you go out and you find a bunch of familiar faces and you find a bunch of familiar people. And then once you settle down, then what happens? A lot of those people that you went out and you found, those people fall off. Not because they're bad people, but because the seasons change. And then the last group are the good friends. And those are the people that you're friends with because you're just good friends with them. You have things in common. You like each other. You make each other feel good. You fill each other's cups. Whenever there's an opportunity to, to share joy, then you want this person around. I don't have a whole bunch of really good friends, but I know I have good friends that I can count on. And I think if we understand that, then what we know is when we go into retirement, we understand who it is that we're dealing with. We know who our friends are for the reason. We know the people that are just there for work and that are work friends and that you would never hang out with them any other time except for the time that you're at work. Or those people that during a difficult time, whether it's at work or outside of work, that um, you were just, they were there for a certain period of time. And sometimes what happens and what's created disappointment for me is 
sometimes I might meet a person that's there for a reason, or I might meet a person that's there for a season. And then I try to make them a good friend and realize we're just not congruent. And then I turn around. And the other watch out I have is when people go back to the past. There's times that I've had where I've evolved beyond people and I've gone back to try to rekindle that because of something. And I just realized we're just in different places. And it's it's almost like when you go back to an old job, which again, is successful for some people, not successful for others, but they're that go back to an old job or go back to an old girlfriend or boyfriend and then realize, oh, this is why we broke up. Oh, this is why we left. It's the same thing. And it's not a perfect science. None of this is a perfect, there's nothing that I speak of on this channel. Uh, it's a disclaimer. I should maybe put it in my comments, but, or in my description, but nothing on this channel is a perfect science, but it's just perspective. Because I, I'll tell you that one of the things that I've realize and I came to this realization today is I had the opportunity to go golfing this afternoon or this morning and I went golfing with uh, a couple of retired guys a couple of 80 year old retired guys and what I thought was interesting was when I was golfing with them I felt way better golfing with them because they were in the same peaceful place that I was or that I am whereas with other people that I golf with that are still working or that are caught up in the mix they bring stress to my round and what I found was I played the round of my life today because I was in a peaceful state of mind because I was around people that were in a peaceful disposition and in a peaceful place with a lot of capacity. So the conversations were enlightening and they were great. I was able to ask some great questions. I was able to just share some ideas, get some ideas, ask some questions, understand some of the folks' things they would do different and they were able to understand some questions and learn some things about me. And it was just this great time. But when you're dealing with people that don't have capacity, then the stuff they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, it comes into the round and sometimes can create a bit of a distraction as you're, as you're going through the round. So again, you look at the, the reason, you look at the season, you look at good friends, and you have to understand that you never know who's going to be whom. But if you have a framework to, to evaluate, then you're going to find yourself in a better place. So that was all I had for today. I wanted to share with you that thought. I Thank you for the comment um, because I, I do think that something that's on a lot of retirees' minds is, or people that are thinking about retirement is, but what about my social network? What about my social connections? How am I going to deal with that? And I'm here to tell you that there's some work that could be done on the front end to help make sure that you don't find yourself in that situation because there's nothing worse than going from having a bunch of people around you that you thought were friends doing something that is absolutely incredible and taking your life leaps and bounds forward just to find that you find you have the sense of loneliness and dejection because you don't have the people around you thought were going to be around so if there's anybody out there that uh, likes this content or would like to hear more content please uh, subscribe to the channel share the channel share it with your friends uh, let people know about what we're doing here i, th I think we have a movement and in and and this movement we're just really trying to set people up to live their best life my goal is never that you retire early but my goal is that you live your best life if you set your life up in such a way that you have a good life, then you may not necessarily retire per se, but you're living a life that's on your terms with the, the right mindset and that you feel good about on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's going in and working or not, but at least you have the perspective to feel good about whatever it is that you do. So on that note, um, I'm gonna let you go, but uh, have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.